Okay, okay, got them a little bored again, and we're going to do a little bit more talking about blends. Now, I've uh, blended refrigerant. I've talked about it a little bit before, and you know, okay, it's a number of different refrigerants, it's the 400 series, but what problem do they solve? What problem do they make? Okay. Everything that makes uh, solves a problem also makes a problem in almost everything we do. Now I'm going to talk about R22. R22 is being replaced because it's an HCFC and it's been determined that it causes environmental damage. Okay, so it's going to be replaced whether we like it or not. It's all the same. It's going to be replaced. Why did we come up with blends in order to replace it? Okay, a blend is two or more refrigerants in a cylinder with different boiling points. And I've gone over the azeotrope and the zeotrope and all that sort of stuff. You're going to have to look at those videos to go over that. But the blends do fractionate, so they're a pain in the tail. And so the blend can be upset by leaking rates of different amounts. So why did we even use these things? Why did they come out? Well, there actually is a reason for it. Uh, manufacturers of refrigerants came up with these blends in order to replace 22 to try to deal with the special problems that are involved. The ideal blend or the ideal replacement refrigerant for R22 would be it has no uh, chemical properties that would damage ozone or cause global warming or any of that, okay? It would also be a highly efficient refrigerant and it would be drop-in. That's the big one. A drop-in refrigerant is something I can take the other refrigerant out and I can put this one in and life is good. Well, it was never that simple. It never is that simple. We have to deal with how things really are. And if I get a, a chemical refrigerant that is efficient and is safe to use and environmentally all this wonderful stuff, then it's probably not going to work. The biggest problem I've seen with them, well not the biggest, but one of the common problems is mineral oil used in R22 systems cannot be used with most of these refrigerants. Now, that doesn't mean they can't really be used with them. It means there's problems if you do. Oil return is one of the problems. Uh, I'm not convinced really oil return is the only problem in some of these because I, I have seen replacement blends put into systems that had mineral oil in them and I've seen the compressors fail about a year later and that oil looks like sludge. So I'm not on board with everybody saying that you can drop in some of these things. But what they do is one of the things they'll do is they'll put butane in there. A small amount of butane so it doesn't really get make it flammable but that mixes with the mineral, mineral oil and it'll, it'll get it back to the compressor. Now, by the way, when I say these kind of things, this is what manufacturer, uh, manufacturers of refrigerants say. Manufacturers of air conditioning equipment are a little different. I think I've told you, now Lennox has said they don't like any of it. I never have got an opinion out of carrier. I'm sure they have one. The problem here is there really is no great refrigerant to replace R22. And you can top off mineral oil with some uh, polyol ester. It doesn't mix. It's like oil and water. But sometimes it makes them survive. So we put these blends in there for a number of reasons, part of which is, of course, oil return. And Part of which is trying to get something that will give us conditions that are fairly close 
to what the original R22 would do. None of these really do well at it. Remember, refrigerant manufacturers will tell you they're the most wonderful things in the world, and equipment manufacturers are not going to say that. They will say, okay, I guess you could use this, but I'll tell you the truth, I don't think any of these blends are going to contribute to long-lasting compressors and other parts of our 22 systems. I still don't like to use blends. I have used them. I don't like using them, but I think maybe you're kind of stuck with them, and you have to figure if a unit's got R22 in it, it's going to be fairly old and it may be close to death anyway. So whatever you put in it, you may lose a compressor a year after you put it in or six months after you put it in. However, that doesn't mean that the refrigerant caused it. It may have just wore out. And so it's kind of like automobiles. They used to say, well, they had R12 in them and well, you put uh, 134A in them and the compressors go out. And a lot of times they do. Who cares? You're going to have to change the compressor anyway. If you go to 134A, you're going to have to put a new compressor in a silly thing anyway. So I've had people say, well, I don't know, what should I do? I put R134A and it probably lasts about a year and it'll die and then puts it off for a year. That's about it. So blends are, every time blends have come out, I mean, they first come out in the 90s for 12, they were all really short-term replacements, just something until the equipment just died off. That's what blends are for 22. I don't think you're going to see in 10 years, I don't think you'll see a blend out there that they're using for 22. They're probably just going to give up on it completely. So anyway, Blends in 22.